Here's my favorite thing in your personal life. Oh boy. Fitzgerald was a member of the 1988 EC Glass high school football team that won the Virginia State Championship because that's my favorite tape of you ever. Can you could you reenact yourself on the sports broadcast in 1988 when you won because they were like asking you, Paul? So what we, he was you were a, not a wide receiver because you were too big. What's the tight thing? end? Tight end. I would never well, be a wide receiver. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, be, we're gonna get to the bisexual <laughs> thing in a minute. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Oh my God! It was the fucking hilarious. The tight end thing yeah, is, is a gift that keeps giving. Necks. They're like you. Paul. It's like, well, I really no. feel like the, no, the game <laughs> game changes thing was <laughs> that that clip is. I don't know what that that clip is actually on my on my on my, on my, um, my Vimeo page as well. That's um, it, it, the boys of '88. Yes. Um, yeah, it was exciting. I came. I said something like, I, I was just playing it for my lady friend not that long ago, and yeah. she was like, "You were a damn hick back then." Um, yeah, because I was. I was. Paul, what was, was the what the was the, the deciding play in the Virginia well, State Championship? I was able to put a little bit of a move on that man, and fortunately, you know, I got into the end zone, and we were able to. Yeah, I mean, just you sound like I sound. He like meant that differently in 1988. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a move on that man. I never thought about that. It's it all sounds. You know, you're you're so. I was like a simple meathead of a high school kid. You know Aww. what I mean? So. Yeah, you, got, you, got a, you got a microphone in front of you. You could have played around. any high school jock in any like high school total, movie ever. Absolutely, just like, like, yeah, you know, that, was, <laughs> that's the clip we should play. It's me, my interview in 1988. So, Paul, what happened out there in the fit? Well, I was able to. Uh, fortunately, yeah. Neil found me in the flat, and I was wide open. I was able to put yeah. a little bit of move on that man. And next thing I know, I was in the zone. I mean, like, <laughs> like dumbass. Like, what happened to me? <laughs> like, but you know, what's interesting. It's like that might have been the genesis of your. Sort of, you know, political awakening because you yep. were a deniac. You, you were a progressive before it was cool. And, sure. But I mean, a lot of yeah, your teammates were African American yeah. in the South. Oh, yes. And, you know, you were teammates and friends. And so, yeah. like, you had, you grew up with a different sort of. I can tell you one of the most uh, disappointing things to me right now. So, there's a whole group of people, you know, who, uh, who I played football with, who I've stayed friends with, and, and people who are, you know, very fierce advocates of. Football at that level uh, being, um, you know, a real connector uh, in, in ways that, you know, that, that we just a lot of times doesn't happen, you know, um, particularly in certain yeah. socioeconomic places in the South and so forth. But like on the, on the playing field, everything's even and, and your your brothers and teammates uh, with people whom you, know, you might not, not otherwise have been interacting with him. And there's a lot of us who just feel strongly that that, that, that that's a, a character shaper and and um, and super important. And I tell you, I have been. I have just been astounded watching this whole, um, you know, the Colin Kaepernick thing and the kneeling thing. Yeah. yeah. I have been astounded to see how few, I mean, almost none until this year, where this has gone for a couple, yep. you know, got white guys who have been able to get it and be like, I mean, now this is like a big deal to like stand next to a black guy who's kneeling, put your hand on the show. For a white guy to do this is like radical. I'm like, what have you not learned? And presumably by the time you're playing the NFL, right. if you've been playing football for 25 years of your life since you were a baby right. with people, with black guys, people of different socioeconomic, like you, cl you clearly have, have had the opportunity to let that affect you. How, do you. how is it that there is not more than one white guy in the NFL who has let that experience affect his yeah. thinking about Black Lives Matter or about any, anything to do with it? It blows my mind. Now, you know, I've had friends in the NFL and it's business and I understand that, but it is the most disheartening thing because we thought that playing football in high school and throughout our entire growing up changed us and did change us. And now I, I see guys at that level who apparently weren't changed by it or, or weren't changed by it enough to let it change their actions. And yeah. it, it, I find it to be the most disheartening. It, it, nothing has turned me off. I'm, I, I'm ashamed to admit it, but you know, all the, the crazy stuff about the NFL and, and, and the, the license they give for domestic violence. And all, I mean, the NFL right. is, is, is just a crooked organization, you know, an entity, yeah. but nothing has upset me as much and nothing has disheartened me and, and taking away my belief in the NFL more well, than the fact that like it hasn't hasn't spread across well, racial lines this whole, well, this whole movement. You know? Absolutely. Not